Hello, everybody. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio, the Sales Professional Network. I am your host, Andre Harrell. This is Blog Talk Radio's first and only show dedicated to the needs of the sales professional. And regardless of the industry that you're in, if you're in the sales business, this channel and show is just for you. We do focus on topics that are relevant to all industries, and the commonality is that we in the sales business as sales professionals face similar challenges each and every day, and TSPN, the Sales Professional Network, sincerely was designed to create a forum where we can kind of come together and discuss these challenges and come up with some solutions and best practices to meet those challenges. Tonight's show is brought to you by AH Square and Beyond Consulting. That's A-H and the number two, and beyond.com, delivering beyond our clients' expectations in sales strategy marketing, and sales training, age, square, and beyond. Increasing your competency always means increasing your sales results. Tonight is just my thoughts on last night's show, which featured the heading, Dealing with a Difficult Sales Boss, What Do I Do? If you listened to last night's show, and I want to say thank you so much for returning to get my thoughts on tonight's subject. If you did not hear last night's show, it is in our archive function on Blog Talk Radio, so you can go to our channel and hear that show in its entirety. And of course, our shows are available on iTunes for free. If you like to go there and download our shows, or even last night's show, uh, our shows are accessible and available on iTunes as well. I'd like to thank Charlie Johnson, CEO and founder at Charlie Johnson Consulting Associates, LLC, for returning to our network to share his thoughts on last night's topic, dealing with a difficult sales boss. Charlie's insights on, on subjects like this are always on point. And if you've had the opportunity to listen to his last visit on our show, What Does It Take to Be a Great Salesperson? I think you'll come away thinking he certainly did not disappoint with his takes last night on dealing with a difficult sales boss. <clears throat> you know, before I, I share my thoughts uh, on the subject, I just want to say up front so that there's absolutely no confusion. As a sales boss, sales director, VP of sales, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having high expectations of your salespeople or your employees and holding them accountable to those expectations. I just want to make sure I get that out right away, that there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I think we can all agree that the crux of the issue, when you look at both sides, the sales boss and the salesperson or sales professional, there's obviously a severe breakdown in communication when one party is perceived as being difficult or demanding in a negative sense. And the other party is resentful and oftentimes in defense mode responding to this type of leadership. You know, in a little while, I'm going to be providing you an outline, outline ways in which someone who's in a sales leadership capacity can communicate effectively their expectations without demanding them. And conversely, point out ways in which the sales professional can be a positive asset to the overall interaction. But before I do that, I want to spend just a little time on the word productivity, because I think this word really applies here. I've said on previous shows that the sales business is really the success business. Our chief responsibility objective is achieving a positive outcome of getting that sale. That's why it's called the sales business, right? <laughs> productivity, and how I define it in this context, is what are we doing as sales leaders and sales professionals to set ourselves up for success in the sales business? That's the million dollar question. So coming back to the subject, dealing with a difficult sales boss, what do I do? You almost have to come back and say to yourself, is this interaction productive? And as a sales boss, does my difficult, demanding demeanor generate productivity? Yeah, maybe for a quick second, because of my authoritative influence I have on my employee or sales professional, but let's be real. You know, from a sales professional point of view, I'm going to do what's necessary just to get you off my back. And when you're not paying attention, I'm contacting sales colleagues who work for the competitor to see if they have openings, or I'm contacting my network to see if there are other opportunities. So guess what, Mr. or Mrs. Sales Boss? I'm utilizing the quote and unquote productive time to look for another job rather than getting after customers. That doesn't sound that productive or setting you and I up for success 
in the success business. In the beginning of the show last night, I shared a story of a sales professional so fed up with his difficult sales boss that he avoided any interaction or communication with his sales boss unless it was absolutely necessary. Now, when you lose the ear of your salespeople or your employees, you are done. When there's no communication between yourself and your sales professional, I guarantee you, you will be replaced as a sales boss. And why, you ask? Because no communication means no productivity, which means no success in the success business. So the moral of the story, if your sales boss or sales professional if you're a sales boss or sales professional and you have this type of relationship, really ask yourself, is this productive? And will it parlay into a prospering, long, successful business relationship? Because both of you are accountable to ensuring there is success in the success business. Okay, as I promised, I'd like to provide some ways in which a sales boss can communicate effectively and positively, I should add, their expectations to their salespeople or employees. Number one, first, always try to, if possible, communicate what your overall vision of that expectation is to the sales professional. And has that vision been communicated to the masses? I will tell you, in my experiences, I've often seen where the sales professional has no idea the genesis of that expectation when it comes from and how, and, you know, where it comes from and how it's delivered towards the successful sales outcome. That definitely needs to be communicated so both parties are on the same page in terms of the agreed upon expectation. That's number one. Number two, are you as a sales boss consistent in, de in delivering your expectations? Nothing is more disturbing <laughs> to a sales professional as to having a schizophrenic boss. Now again, and please, I, I do not want to disparage the mentally ill. The word schizophrenic is just being used here as an adjective. But we've all seen or experienced a sales boss who's been stressed from their leadership and has shared that same stress with their salespeople or employees by demanding an expectation that was clearly out of the blue. Thus, an inconsistent message which comes across as a difficult or demanding expectation. Now, sales bosses, please listen to me. If, you ha if this happens to you, pump the brakes, take a deep breath, and frame how you want to communicate that expectation, especially if it's come to you from your leadership out of the blue. But importantly, and this is, this is something important to remember, make sure you are consistent in your expectations of your people because you will come across, quite frankly, as crazy and difficult to your people. That's, that's, that's really important. And number three, finally, and keep in mind, folks, there are many more of these that I have, but I thought I'd just choose and talk about the top three. Become a partner with your salespeople and sales team. I talk a lot about humility and why it's so important in today's leadership. And if your people know by your actions and words that you have their best interests, the expectations you have of them will not only be easy for them to swallow. I'll go a step further and say they'll exceed your expectations because they know you have their back. And examples of partnering could be, and Charlie brought this up yesterday, getting out in the field with your salespeople. You know, another could be sitting down with them and developing a personal or professional career development plan. And then there's another that I call mental actions. And I call this by sharing risk of the job with your people so that they know you're in the bunker with them and that you support their development. I guarantee you, if you implement any one of these three tactics, or all three of these tactics, your expectations of your salespeople and employees will be welcome with open arms. Now, sales professionals, I certainly haven't forgot about you. <laughs> you do have some accountability in this interaction with the sales boss. And it's normal and, quite frankly, most times necessary to withdraw from the difficult sales boss. However, if, you're, if you are making that a career choice to never interact with your sales leadership, I will tell you that road will come to an end. Maybe not soon, but eventually it will come to an end. And someone told me not too long, or I should say a long time ago, that matching wits, especially in corporate America with your immediate boss in a toxic relationship, typically is not going to go the way of the employee. It just doesn't. That's a whole nother show that we can talk about. But it just will not go the employee's way. 
And so what I see from a sales professional's perspective is that you have two options to look at. Number one, I'm sure all of you have heard the term manage up. Here, you may want to manage up. You be the person or proactively encourage better communication with your sales boss. And Charlie, again, put it great last night. Respectfully ask for clarification. Why? You know, tell me a little bit about why you've come up with this expectation and what's your vision around this expectation so that you're totally on the same page with your, with your sales boss. Taking this tack will accomplish so many things, but number one, you're not backing down. And they, and they say the positive approach always supersedes the negative and really spotlights to everyone the negative behavior on the other end if you're positive. So encourage in positive dialogue, and if it means gathering further clarification, then so be it. The second option, and this is real talk, look aggressively for other opportunities. If you feel you're being disrespected, abused, and I've seen in some cases bullied, then certainly you can go to HR, but that'll open up a whole can of worms, and quite frankly, by taking that action, you might be purchasing your own ticket out of the company. Let's, let's just be real about that. But once it's clear that you've tried to take the necessary steps to improve the situation and conditions, and that hasn't worked, the only avenue I see is a proper exit from the company. So as I wrap up, I hope each of you has had a chance to watch the Summer Olympic Games. Not only, of course, for the support of the company from which you come from, but having an appreciation for the excellence and understanding of the brutal work that these athletes endure to succeed in an event that take about 10 or 20 seconds. Think about it. We talked about last night and tonight the difficult sales boss. And if you don't think each one of those athletes, coaches, are demanding of them in terms of having high expectations of each one of their athletes to get their athletes to perform at a high level, you're fooling yourself. But I bet you on the other end of that high expectation by that coach, there's love and support for that athlete. Tonight's After Thought Show has been brought to you by Age Square and Beyond Consulting. That's AH the number two and beyond.com. Delivering beyond our clients' expectations in sales strategies, marketing, and sales training. AH Square and Beyond, increasing your competency always means increasing your sales results. If you'd like to contact us about our services, we can be contacted at, and our number is 267-221-8529, or again, you can contact us by our website, ahsquareandbeyond.com consulting, okay? We will not have, and I just want to inform everyone, we will not have a show next week, but we'll be back the week after August 14th, and we'll be discussing the topic, why can't leaders make good or any decisions? And again, it's surprising, somewhat alarming to me, when you see leaders at the top of corporations or even in government shy away from making the tough decisions, when it's probably the most important responsibility in their job and in their roles. I assure you, it will be a captivating discussion uh, on August 14th, because it really amazes me why this doesn't take place. So please come back after we take our little break next week, August 14th, 7 p.m., why can't leaders make good or any hard decisions will be the topic during that show. And, of course, I always like to remind everybody that our show can be, of course, accessed on iTunes, and you'll be able to download some of your favorite shows, last night's show or even tonight's show, on iTunes, and the download is for free. And, of course, if you wait 10 or 15 minutes or so after the program tonight, you can hear this show in its full, in its full entirety in our archives function here on Blog Talk Radio. And also, of course, please share the good word of the Sales Professional Network to your friends, coworkers, constituents in the sales business, or even folks that are not in the sales business. We talk about topics that are, are related to uh, the folks that are not in the sales business as well. And again, the Sales Professional Network, we meet every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the best marketing is share, is share word of mouth. So please, tell your friends and constituents that there is a network, the Sales Professional Network, just for them. And again, we talk about topics that are related to them. And we also deal with coming up with solutions uh, to meet those challenges uh, that we as sales professionals have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that, I want to thank everybody. If you did listen to last night's show for coming back and just getting my thoughts on the whole topic of dealing with the difficult sales boss and, and what do you do. And I hope I was able to 
you know, inspire you and help you in dealing with that and kind of coming up with some solutions. If you find yourself as a sales professional in that situation or if you're a sales boss, how can you kind of tweak your expectations and not coming across so demanding but coming across as a partner and coming across as a positive approach and ensuring that your folks not only exceed in their job but they also address your expectations too as well. So thank you so much everybody for listening to tonight's program and with that have a wonderful rest of your evening.